Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. When it comes to the environment and climate change, we in general must report on many gloom and doom stories. It is the nature of the topic, I suppose. But last week we reported on Pope Francis's encyclical, and today we have another good news story, the state of Hawaii. It is the first state in the union to sign a bill with 100% commitment to renewable energy and to address and prepare for climate change head on. Hawaii is particularly vulnerable to rising sea levels, but also have access to many renewable energy sources, such as solar and wind power. To discuss this, we are joined by two guests, State Congressman Chris Lee. He represents the 51st District of Hawaii. He's currently the chair of the Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Also joining us is Mark Jacobson. He's a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Stanford University and the director of Stanford's Atmosphere Energy Program. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, uh, uh, Congressman, give, give us a sense of the risks faced by Hawaii and why the governor and you and, of course, the entire legislature decided to address climate change head on and also, of course, switching to renewable energy the way you have described it in the bill. Well, you know, this is something that is absolutely critical to the future of our way of life here, our economy. and. Um, how we're going to proceed in generations to come because we are already, this isn't, climate change isn't something that's coming. It's, it's here and we're feeling it right now. We've seen decreased rainfall. We're seeing increases in uh, sea level rise that are eroding our beaches faster and faster. And that's the lifeblood of our economy. And if we can't uh, continue the way we're going, we're going to be stuck. And so we have to take action and we have to do it now. And how are you planning to make this transition? I mean, this is something that a lot of people cannot get their head around, switching from fossil fuels into renewable energy sources. Well, you know, it's something that we're already on track uh, with. We've had on the books um, uh, efforts to move toward more renewable energy. And right now we're at about 22 percent uh, renewable out of our entire uh, electricity sector. And so moving to 100 percent, I think, is something that is it's common sense. And we have a lot of wind, we have a lot of solar. We have more solar penetration per capita here. Um, roughly one in eight homes have uh, solar on their rooftops generating power. And it's just the next step, but the next necessary step in order to get us not only uh, face and, and adapt to climate change as it's coming, but also to save our economy money because fossil fuels fundamentally are only gonna be more and more expensive for us down the road. And Mark, uh, get in on this. Um, obviously, Hawaii is uh, is very distinct here in terms of the rest of the country. You've done a report on this. Tell us about what you're finding. Yeah, first, we've been developing energy plans for each of the 50 United States. And in fact, we just finalized those plans uh, about a week ago, and including Hawaii. And each state has its own unique set of resources. In the case of Hawaii, it has a lot of solar it has a lot of wind, it has actually a lot of geothermal, you know, not a lot of hydroelectric, um, but maybe even tiny amounts of tidal and wave power. So we think for Hawaii that, and well, first I want to mention that we're looking at transforming not only electric power, but all energy sectors to clean renewable energy. So transportation, heating and cooling, and industry as well. And so our plans are really also looking forward to 2000, between now and 2050, doing a transition between then. And we found that transforming Hawaii's energy infrastructure, first, if you, we would electrify everything. So we'd electrify transportation, maybe even some hydrogen, but that's produced from electricity too. Uh, heating and cooling would be electrified. Well, cooling is already electrified, but heating, instead of using gas heaters, you'd use heat pumps or um, solar hot water preheating. Uh, for industry, there are a lot of electric uh, appliances too, even stoves. You can use like induction stoves that are run on electricity. So we'd electrify everything. And it turns out when you do that, um, you reduce power demand significantly. In the case of Hawaii, you could reduce power demand just by electrifying all the sectors on aggregate of about 44 percent. How do you, how do you reduce power demand? Well, take, um, it's mostly in transportation. So take, for example, an electric car, the plug, what's called the plug-to-wheel efficiency, 
of an electric car is about 80 to 86 percent. In other words, 80 to 86 percent of the electricity going into a car goes to move the car. The rest is waste heat. In the case of a gasoline car, only 17 to 20 percent of the energy in gasoline that you pay for actually goes to move the car. The rest is waste heat. So you actually reduce your end use power demand by about a factor of four to five in transportation. In other words, uh, 80 percent reduction of power demand in transportation. That's where you get the best benefit. And that's, re that's why electric cars, for example, to drive them, they only cost 80 cents a gallon equivalent compared to like three or $4 a gallon for gasoline. So a consumer would save about $20,000 in fuel costs driving an electric car for 15 years, 15,000 miles per year. What are, the, uh, what are the challenges in uh, making this shift to using electricity? Well, these are all with existing technology. So I think the first challenge is getting information to people because once people realize that electricity is so efficient, that electric cars are so cheap to drive, I mean, that right now they're, the actual buying the car is, is more expensive, but the fuel cost savings is over, outweighs that by far over time. And, you know, in the case of Hawaii, you know, you don't have to deal with long distance transmission. They have, you know, it's, well, except for, you know, when you're going across islands, you might need some transmission. So I'd say transmission is a, is a challenge, uh, but that's more of a regulatory issue, not a, even a cost issue. But I should say, you know, in terms of our plan for Hawaii, this is in 2050, if you electrify everything, we're thinking about, you know, around 40% solar, 28% um, wind, almost half offshore and half onshore, and about 30% geothermal power, and, and then tiny amounts of hydroelectric tidal wave power. And that's to power Hawaii for all purposes, for everything. In 2050, with growing population and accounting for the energy efficiency improvements. And so I was hoping that uh, Chris and you could join us for a second segment. It's sort of like. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.